Uh, hi. Uh, my name is George. I, this is my uh, uh, Twitter handle and uh, GitHub handle and everything handle. Um, the slides for this talk are available there on GitHub. There's also a Russian version, but uh, currently we, have, we still have people who speak English and are interested in that level of uh, So I'm going to try to open the uh, you, uh, I'm, I'm also one of the people who had to like switch places because I cannot do dates good. I took my return flight for tomorrow for some reason because some uh, bad dates. And you probably expected this person to have that one. Um, yeah, so, um, life changes people. Um, oh, I, uh, just a second, I'm going to load my uh, notes because I don't really remember what I was uh, about to say. All right, there we go. Uh, so I work for this company, uh, SoundCloud. I uh, live in Berlin. Um, uh, SoundCloud is uh, one of the leading streaming platforms. Uh, for music, podcasts, uh, sounds of uh, sneezing hedgehogs, and you know, all kinds of things. Um, we uh, well, this uh, wide variety of people, uh, like this uh, HTC uh, and uh, Led Zeppelin, the uh, high tier content from the major uh, music labels, and then also like uh, underground music, like. This uh, Ukrainian artist and then um, uh, type light band thing. Uh, some podcasts, Haskell podcast, and because for, for hosting their content. It's quite quite a good podcast. Listen to it, it's very nice. Um, so yeah, uh, please do use us. We're uh, we're fun. Um, we have a um, we have around twelve hours of uh, content uh, uploaded by creators. Uh, every minute, and uh, we get like around 35,000 listening years every month, and we have around 125 million tracks uh, on the platform. So to compare to like, for example, Spotify, Spotify has like 30 million, um, and we have all content that they have since two weeks ago. We've signed Sony, and before that we signed Universal and Warner. So that's also there. Uh, we're aiming at being like the biggest uh, sound platform ever, um, and uh, we're in a in a quite unique position uh, with regards to that because uh, we're uh, uh, we're like open. People can just like come to our platform and upload their uh, music if they're like garage band or some like uh, in-house music. Producer, creator, DJ, whatever, they don't need to be signed by a label. And if they upload uh, stuff like uh, uh, ACDC or Led Zeppelin or uh, Britney Spears, the system will uh, figure it out and they will uh, get uh, some uh, kind of punishment. And some will be taken down, of course. Um, we're, um, we have about five petabytes of uh, files of like stuff, and then uh, to compare to Spotify, they have around one petabyte. And we have, and our, our team is like ten times small, for like three hundred people. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, maybe two hundred in Berlin. So yeah, trying to compete there. Um, yeah. That's what I was actually talking about. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, things from daily work, you know, like war stories, uh, like maintenance of a server was postponed by some rappers sending songs to each other. You know, like uh, weird, weird stuff. Weird stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, but anyway, we uh, uh, a lot of people think that we are uh, a ruby shop or uh, a gold shop or. Uh, whatever else shop that you could have uh, read on our blog. Uh, if we're anything shop, I would <laughs> kind of say that we're a scholar shop, but um, so we have a, a zoo of technology, right? like uh, for historical reasons we have Ruby. Uh, we started out as a, a Ruby monolith in 2008. Uh, the uh, code base, the, the one which was, which we started like uh, getting rid of it in around maybe 2011. Uh, the first project that we uh, yeah 
The first project that we um, first part of the of the sorry, of the of the system that we uh, oh, nice. of the system that we uh, got rid of was uh, in app messaging. We basically uh, took it out, uh, re implemented it uh, for some reason in Scala. Uh, I think that was the first Scala project ever uh, in the time uh, It was rewritten three times. I personally wrote it twice. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, so it, it went, it went uh, well, and we kind of decided to, to go that way because uh, the, the whole, like, all, for, for obvious reason, the whole monolith was just like not scaling in both like programmatic way and in uh, like human way. Like fifty people trying to you know, contribute to uh, to the same big thing uh, over and over, and like the boy was able. Um, it still takes like forty minutes of that of that of the thing that's left from the monolith. Before that, before my time in SoundCloud, I heard that there were like. Three people could deploy mothership, and like if someone goes on vacation, we don't deploy mothership because 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 we don't deploy mothership without those people around. They just you know good luck and stuff. Um, and so uh, like the whole thing was uh, at some at some point we decided uh, after extracting the messages from the platform, uh, the project was we uh, called Congo. Uh, we decided that yeah, it's a it's a success. We should do more of that. We extracted like uh, creator stats, so like analytics for creators, where when your sound was played, liked, uh, we posted whatever commented on. Um, we extracted feeds, like pretty much everything uh, critical tasks we tried to extract from the mothership. Uh, we didn't have any uh, guidelines on which languages to use for that. Uh, so uh, Scala was. One of the first. Um, before 2012, we had like, I think I, I, I went through some of the history of like our uh, GitHub repository and it's like at least 50 languages for some weird things like I haven't heard before. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, at some point, we decided to finally converge on JVM. Uh, so nowadays, uh, it's mostly Scala. We have some closure, we have some. JRuby for historical, for historical reasons, because we have uh, a lot of very, very, very uh, good Ruby developers, like ridiculously good Ruby developers. They managed to scale this mothership up until 2012 and like, make it work for tens of millions of people. I have no idea how they did it. It's just like some weird uh, Ruby shit. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the reason, I, I, I personally believe that the reason we ended up with <coughs> Uh, mostly using uh, Scala for so like uh, as far as I've seen in the last maybe a year or year and a half, um, every new project that every new uh, service that needs to be like spawned gets spawned in Scala. Even though we're like historically a, a Ruby company and most people feel more comfortable with Ruby, uh, they still use Scala because uh, we have this. Uh, framework on top of enable. We're using Twitter stack, by the way. We're using Twitter stack because um, we have the same uh, the same investors, so we have like very tight bonds with them, and we they, they went through this like microservice refactoring uh, a year ago before we kind of had to, and so uh, we figured like well, I mean, it worked for them, so kind of worked for us, I guess. Um, and then we have this uh, like library on top of their uh, enable. Web RPC framework service builder thing, um, which basically it, it, it adds all the bells and whistles that we use in our infrastructure. So um, you you can like create a web uh, a web a Canadian based web service in like three lines of code, and you get for free like the monitoring. We're using Prometheus, which is our um, uh, internal tool. Uh, for monitoring, well, it's actually like uh, nowadays it's more or less external with uh, with uh, open source it and a lot of companies are using it. Uh, it sends like errors to Airbrake. You would like uh, log the uh, you would like uh, log the deployments into the uh, Slack channel and all that. So like all uh, all of the bolts and whistles you get for free, and you just like don't write anything. I would I personally think that that, that was the reason why. Uh, why Scala was uh, so popular. So yeah. Just 
sec. But DLC. Uh, so what is uh, what is DLC? DLC is a uh, is a short name for uh, type level uh, compiler. It, the name has been uh, actually endorsed by Daniel Spira. He's, he's like I think he came up with the name and so he's really proud of that uh, name. <laughs> and so he's uh, he's really pushing towards using that name. Uh, and uh, there is this blog post that's called uh, Type Level Scholar in the Future of Scholar System. So basically, the reason. So anyway, we we, uh, we, we all love, love Scholar here, right? Uh, like we're all here because we uh, enjoy writing uh, Scala or we are like uh, being pulled by the Stockholm syndrome for some reason sometimes. <laughs> So um, everyone, everyone has their own reasons for that, and uh, uh, there's this guy Travis Travis Brown wrote a blog post about why he likes Scala. It says uh, it, it, the, the name of the blog post is "Roll Your Own Scala." Um, I did not think about like highlighting the URL here, but if you if you uh, open the uh, GitHub repo, there's like you can click that. Um, and so in that in that blog post. He is basically trying to work around like partial type application, you know, like all the all the known uh, weird stuff about Scala, like uh, partial type, like things that people don't really like, like partial type applications and uh, uh, high order types, and like there's this bug of with its uh, S five to seven twelve. He's trying to like work around that a little bit, and um, he's like he's working around. Uh, broken, like what he uh, perceives as broken things in language, with like other broken things in language, and as a result, he gets something quite nice looking. So that's 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 his reasoning for liking Scala. And uh, at the end, he says, uh, basically, to recap, we've taken a few basic but still pretty broken Scala language features: singleton types, refinement types, type projections, and the implicit resolution system. We very painfully built a language for ourselves that at least kind of looks like supports partial type parameter application, parameter unification, and multiple implicit parameter search. And then at the end, he says that I think that's pretty neat, but I can also understand why almost everyone else would find it for it. So um, the point that he's trying to make is that uh, this kind of uh, interaction of Sort of broken things, which are there for historical reasons, or uh, have been there for like just accidentally, like things like type lambdas. No one actually created type lambdas; they just were like they. It, the, the language appeared to be able to express those things, and uh, yeah. So that was just, just there broke by luck, and he's basically making a point that these things. Uh, they don't really make people come to Scala, but they make people like stay with Scala. Uh, so yeah, DLC. Um, uh, what, what 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 are we trying to do with like basically you know forking a, a, a Scala? Why 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 and how and aren't we like trying to like you know break the community into like type level Scala and then like. Uh, type of light band scala, and then like, there's also the Slara scala, and like other scala, Doty, not really scala. <laughs> all these, all these scalas. What, what, why are we, why are we producing them? What, 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 what's the reason? So, um, I personally like to think about uh, TLC as uh, scala for people who are kind of nostalgic about uh, pre 2.0 things. So if you if you've used Scala before, I personally uh, the first version of Scala I used was 2.7, and uh, I think when I immediately when I started, uh, 2.8 was released, and so we were like um, our team was like migrating to 2.8, and then yeah. like a few years later 2.9. That was very painful, but still very rewarding because a lot of uh, new changes and like almost complete re uh, rewrite of like collections library. Or new parallel collections and all that. 
So that was like, uh, from on the one hand side it was very painful, on the other hand side it was like very rewarding. And you know, uh, for people who are who miss those feelings, um, we basically we basically for it. Um, Scala, we added some some of, of the features that we that we well first of all put because we're not uh, compiler developers. Um, we like all have uh, full time jobs, um, which are not developing uh, compilers. Um, and but uh, on the second hand, we like wanted these features in the language and um, uh, type uh, like pen was not really happy about the entire implementations. We were just we, we were just anxious to like try them out in, in the wild. If they're gonna if they're gonna work, if, if we're gonna be using them, they're gonna be like just worth it. Um, so yeah, uh, and the whole idea is that uh, the fork is kind of beneficial for both uh, type level and uh, light band in the sense that we get to battle test uh, the ideas that we always wanted to battle test and they get some assurance that we're gonna if, if we're gonna send a pull request with, with a new uh, thing that thing is has been already used in production uh, there are people who understand how it works there are some uh, we like understand the corner cases and all that um, yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, oh uh, and, and, and another thing is that we're we really, we really want to be backwards compatible with uh, Lightband style, uh, in the sense that all the features that are like uh, different behavior from the Lightband style, we want to put them behind the flag. So if you if you use TLC without the flags, you should behave the same as uh, Scala C. Uh, so exactly the same, the same way. So um, this is how you can uh, already use it. Apparently. Uh, SBT is awesome, and starting from version 0, 0.13.6, uh, they allow uh, using Scala organization. Uh, 0, 0.13.6 was like what a year ago, and I, so I, I, I have no idea how they how they learned about the fact that there are, there might be different Scala organizations, uh, but they actually uh, implemented support for that. Uh, there is a published uh, 2.11.7 version. There's also published 2.11.8 uh, snapshots and 2.11.9 snapshots. I published 2.11.9 snapshot yesterday in the evening, uh, but be careful, I haven't really tested it. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, there's a, pull, there's a pull request to the uh, type to the TLC uh, GitHub, but uh, yeah, I haven't tested it. So anyway, what are, what are some features that we added uh, on top of of Scala. Um, uh, so some of the features are uh, we added uh, first class syntactic support for type, type lambdas. Um, we added another annotation uh, implicit ambiguous. Uh, it's actually coming to uh, Scala 2.12 and this number 4673 is the full request in the uh, type type uh, line. Type safe Scala uh, repository. Uh, we added uh, we added one of the implementation of uh, support for singleton types, the thing that Dmitry was talking about, which is uh, also known as SIP twenty string. Uh, we added uh, uh, an, uh, a thing that we call irrefutable generator patterns, uh, and we added some stuff to the parser to make it you know just nice. Um, so type one. Uh, how many of you know what type lambda is? Okay, so a lot of people actually. Okay, so uh, uh, if you uh, basically the type lambda, you 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 only need you not only, but you usually uh, you need a type lambda when you want to uh, partially apply uh, uh, a thing with like several type type parameters. So here I'm defining this. Has anyone uh, been downstairs to the monads, functors, thing, talk? Uh, okay, do people just know what a functor is in general? <laughs> so a functor is a thing with a map and, and some laws, but like we, we're not going to talk about it, but it's like a map with, which conforms to some signature. That's, that's, that's all we need to know. 
So this is where this is how we define a functor. Uh, there's some uh, map from uh, a functor that takes a, uh, an, f, an f of a and a function from a to b and returns an f uh, of b and it behaves like you would expect the map to behave. Um, and so you would you, you probably uh, can imagine how you would define an instance for for a functor uh, of like a list. You would just use like this dot map for uh, an option to like option dot map, um, uh, and you don't need to do anything on the like to, to satisfy the compiler with, with, with regards to types. Um, you can you probably uh, imagine how you would uh, define uh, a functor for uh, for an either. Uh, you would do like if you if, if the thing that you want to map is on the left, you would do like left dot left map, or if you do the thing for dot left dot map, uh, and if the thing is on the right, you would do dot right dot map. Uh, but then if you just write that in, in the definition of the, the instance, that would like the compiler would like would say like there's like too many holes in the type and my friends don't really uh, understand what's going on. So this is. This is where type lambdas come. You you try to satisfy the compiler telling which hole you need built. Here you say like on the left, please. Um, so this is a type lambda, um, and then uh, this is this is what the same the same thing would look like with with our type lambda symbol. So basically, it kind of it kind of looks like a a type function, right? Like from some y to either something on the left y, right? Um, some more examples. Um, these are all valid type lambdas. Uh, so things that you can put in type. Um, uh, this is a quote from a very notorious person in the Scala community. His name is uh, uh, Paul. Uh, he's, he's famous for, for a lot of things. I think the, the biggest uh, the, the biggest winter storm was when he like quit uh, type save because reasons. And uh, 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 one of the he, he has a lot of very very great quotes, uh, like seriously uh, very great quotes. And one of those is. Uh, on one of the tickets of there, he said, type lambdas are cool and all, but not a single line of the compiler was ever written with them in mind. Well, now there is now a few lines. Um, just support that. Since I have level scroll. Um, next, uh, in this video, uh, who has ever seen a thing where you're, you're like, uh, okay, <laughs> who has ever seen a thing where you're like, I wanna, I wanna, I want this function to like work on on stuff, but I don't want it to like uh, return a unit because I don't want people to like print print one or something like that. So like I, I want the function to like work on units, like work on whatever string, work on anything. But if I if I pass something that returns a unit, I don't want it to compile. Or like something that returns a not not only unit, like I want it to work on any, everything except for this specific type. Uh, yeah. Okay, there are some people. So uh, there is like the, the, it's it, it's a uh, it's a hack. Um, uh, so Miles well, Miles came up with this hack. Uh, the the whole the whole idea of this hack is where he basically uh, defines a type class that witnesses that a is not a subtype of b and and then he uh, he defines some ambiguous uh, implicit for for the case where a is basically a subtype of b. And so when when you when, when you say like uh, I don't want and then some more magic and then uh, what, <laughs> just you know it's just really like nuts and it's just, it's, sorry. Uh, and then uh, in the functions, you basically provide the type that you don't want it to be the super the, uh, subtype of. And then um, basically the implicit resolution will kick in. And if it's not a subtype of the specific type unit in this case, 
uh, this implicit will be found and nothing will be will, will just happen. And then if it is a subtype of unit or a unit, uh, this implicit will be found and then this implicit will be found and then you'll get the, the compiler error saying like I have too many implicits, um, do something. Right? So we kind of have a, a result where um, where we get a compiler error for <laughs> <laughs> we have a compiler error for a case where we wanted compiler error, when we don't have compiler error for the case where we don't, didn't want compiler errors. Uh, but we get uh, some very weird uh, error message about like uh, ambiguous implicits. We actually get two of them, and they're completely impossible to understand if you don't know Ah, you, oh, you get two of them. Okay. Yeah, so you, you, you like you, you get the you, get, you kind of get the result that you wanted, but you, you don't you don't get like user friendliness at all. It's just like horrible. Uh, so instead of getting that, you get a compilation with the implicit ambiguous annotation on the ambiguous places that you provide. Uh, you get a compiler error saying returning that type is forbidden, returning unit is forbidden, which is nicer. It's still a hack, but it's a nicer error message of that time. Um, singleton types. Uh, singleton types uh, are one of those things that are behind the flags because, like, uh, things that I showed you uh, before that, uh, those things they 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 happen at the except for annotation. Uh, those things are happening in the in the issue uh, uh, phase of the compiler, so like it doesn't really it doesn't really change anything. So it still uh, still behaves the same way. Uh, single types are uh, happening in the cipher, I guess. I in the what? In uh, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what 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 are singleton types? I immediately have this like weird uh, example. Um, okay, yeah, sure. I'll, 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 I'll hmm. This is a singleton type, k dot type. Uh, it's, um, it's not k, like big k, it's a small k dot type. So it has only one inhabitant, which is of type k dot type. Um, an example of a very, very simple singleton type is like seven dot type. It has only one inhabitant, seven. So like eight is not a seven dot type. Uh, it's like it's a type that uh, basically captures the fact that w w what's in the value. So, so this is a, uh, a potential uh, use case for uh, for singleton types. Uh, have any has anyone seen uh, shapeless records? Yeah. Okay. Not many. So, uh, shapeless records. Has anyone uh, has anyone heard about uh, HLists? Okay, that's that's great. So, shapeless records actually are basically HLists which contain tuples of things. And on the left, uh, the thing is usually a singleton type which uh, is used as a key. And then on the right, there's some value. So, basically, the whole idea of that is to use the left side as a like a key in the map, and then the right side is a like, value in the map. So what, what, what they're using it for, what, what, what it could be used for, can be used for, and useful for, uh, is uh, basically building a, a heterogeneous map, um, where uh, some uh, values are indexed by uh, singleton types, like seven to type, eight to type, uh, etc. So this uh, this is uh, like poor man's uh, implementation of that. Uh, we define some trait which is which is trying to witness the association uh, of some key with some value, and this is the value. And this is the type of the value. This is the key. It doesn't appear anywhere here. It's just a key for like you know compile time purposes. It's not gonna be anywhere in the runtime. This is how we make one of those. So, to provide, we, we, we want to provide a key, uh, we want to provide a value, and we want to get out the association of the key dot type, not key, not k, but like the key dot type, and uh, a value. 
Uh, well, this is like pretty straightforward. This is how you construct. You just like put that there, and, like this there. Um, and then uh, one of the one of the one of the uh, possibilities to find one of those things by the key is to perform an implicit resolution by the singleton type k dot type. So because this k dot type is going to be different for different keys, it's not going to be like if you put the seven there, it's not going to be an it's going to be a seven dot type. Um, so this is how you this is how you do it. You find an implicit for for that created thing if it's there. If it's not, we're going to get the compile time error, and we take out the value. And the type is dependent on whatever we fetch out of here. So yeah, this doesn't probably make much sense, but I'll show you how we, how you use it. Um, so we create a few of those. We create the first thing, which is like associates a one with like a panda for some reason, and then we create the second thing, which associates a two with a some double digit. And if you look at the types, this is an association with a key of int one. This is a, an association of key with an int two. So those are two different implicits. They 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 are not of the same type. Um, this one is int one. This one is int two. It's not like two int. And then the same thing for like strings because like that. Uh, and then using the lookup that we defined over here, because because those are implicit, and we can resolve them by this type over here, uh, we can start trying to find those. So if you do lookup one, there we go. Uh, there it is. Um, we find the string band, and if we do lookup two, we find the double two. So. Oh. <laughs> Um, so no, notice that the types here are different, and like this looks like an int, but well, it, it is an int. But the lookup, the actual uh, type parameter over here that, that, that gets passed, is not an int. It's uh, one dot type, and so the types are witnessed here. They're different uh, in the same way that we created them. So this is a string, a double, and then a string. And if we do a lookup of Blah, it's going to say that there's there's no blah at like compile time. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of nice, kind of, I don't know, some people would say use, useless, but kind of fun. Um, uh, the other one, uh, the other thing that we added is uh, irrefutable pattern generators, gen generator patterns. Uh, so, and this for comprehension. Um, let's see what the sugars do. This is what the sugars do. Um, looks weird, but uh, basically the thing to notice is that we are filtering the option over here, and if it's a tuple, then we're like falling through and then mapping, and if it's not a tuple, then we're not falling through. Uh, which is weird, right? Like we statically know that that's a tuple, right? It's fun too, and like, why, why, why are we filtering these things statically known to be a tuple? So with the uh, irrefutable pattern, uh, irrefutable patterns, the patterns, uh, we just don't. So like that thing just disappears because we know that it's a tuple. Um, there are what? Um, oh, yeah, I haven't translated all the slides. So with there are there are there are some uh, some drawbacks. There are, it's it's a different behavior. That's why that's why we basically uh, are hiding it behind the the flag. So for example, um, if I had uh, x comma not underscore but like three over here, um, it's still a tuple. Uh, but we would, we would get a match exception. Uh, the canonical behavior would filter it up, 
because it, it doesn't conform to x at half uh, 2. Uh, in our case, it will, it will throw an exception, uh, which is like, uh, I don't know, it's kind of like valid behavior if you know what to expect. Um, uh, a very useful thing in, the, in this implementation is that uh, if you want to extract patterns in the core comprehension on the left, uh, your thing on the right, in this case option, needs to have a with filter. Uh, otherwise, it just won't work. Uh, with our implementation, it just needs a map. Uh, and you will need a with filter only if you use a guard statement in a, in a, in a, in a guard statement in a core comprehension. It's basically option topple if blah blah. Then we'll use a with filter. So, you know, reducing the amount of uh, generated code is kind of nice. I forgot to translate the headline of the, of the slide. It, it says uh, nifties, basically. Um, we added some, uh, again, plot, plot parser level uh, niceties to, to Scala. So, like, Scala, in, in uh, one of the languages that people uh, in the community like to refer to uh, Haskell, you can have uh, you can have variables with primes after them, and people tend to like that, especially for uh, you know nested functions where you, in this case, you want to compute the Fibonacci numbers, uh, you want to call the internal function uh, a Fibonacci prime, basically, which we can do now, and you can you can use uh, a pound sign, uh, a huge addition, <laughs> and uh, we have a, a, a literal for bytes. So that uh, is literal for bytes in the same way as how it's literal for more. Um, yeah, so the whole vision for uh, Tableau, Tableau compiler is um, bleeding edge. This is what I try to express with like this plot and mountains. Uh, <laughs> uh, we want to we want to basically right now we're on 211 branch of the Scala C. Uh, we we obviously are not gonna release for 2.10. Uh, we are kind of thinking to go to 2.12, but then I listened to Dmitry today and uh, apparently it makes sense to go directly to Tokyo. Um, especially given that uh, single type, singleton types are already implemented there, and I bet they're a lot less buggy than the Scala C implementation. And parser didn't change much, so I guess most of the implementations can be justified. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah. Um, um, oh, yeah, and Doty. Uh, well, yeah, that's my favorite thing. I wanted to say that Doty, the source system has a source system effect, so it's going to be perfect. Uh, no pressure. Um, yeah. So uh, if you if you ever want to contribute, because it's like currently it's very uh, a low volume project. It's just like me updating from uh, Scala C, uh, like backporting changes from Scala C, like every half a year, basically. Uh, sometimes you get a chance to. Uh, work on some things, but you know. Um, so if you if you ever want to con contribute, uh, just like uh, working on uh, test suite would be uh, greatly appreciated. There's a uh, uh, Scala test suite is uh, what, what they call part test. It's a thing which uh, creates a uh, a REPL, like uh, spins up the whole compiler in the REPL and like puts things that you want to put there and then compare the output with the check file. Uh, so that's like, it, it runs in parallel, but it's very, very, very slow. The whole test suite take, uh, the whole part test, test suite takes like at least 45 minutes. Um, I think on this machine it takes like an hour at least. Uh, but they have a lot of JUnit tests which just test the internals of the compiler. And that test suite just finishes in like, I don't know, five minutes. Um, I can show you. Um, so, 
Oh, by the way, there, uh, there are this, uh, this ideas that uh, contributing to Scala compiler is so weird because they have like this ant build and like it's not even Maven and not even SPT. Look, it's SPT. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, all the, all the operations, as far as I know, have been uh, completely uh, migrated to SPT. And if you run the test, it will run the uh, JUnit test suite, it will first compile it. Um, and then run it. Um, I think it's going to run faster than I, than I can finish uh, showing you this slides. So yeah, uh, another thing which would be greatly appreciated is like some documentation, reporting, and fixing bugs. Uh, fixing is even better than reporting. <laughs> There's bunch of reported bugs. Um, and backporting changes from type safe Scala is, yeah, that would be, that would be great. I, it would be really, that would really relieve me from, from doing that. Um, we talk a little bit about like things that we um, we don't really plan plan to do right now because like we don't have bandwidth, but it would be nice to like you know fantasize and it's not on the roadmap of uh, Scala C at least. Uh, it could be on the roadmap of uh, type level Scala if there are a lot of people. Uh, trying to implement, so for example, refinement types, which could be built on top of uh, uh, singleton types. Or refinement types is basically, to, to remind you, singleton types is basically that. Uh, X is of type 7 to type, 7. If we spend that to basically a function that like takes the thing and like ignores it and returns a 7, uh, that, would, that should be like equivalent, right? And, and then we would expand that to be like uh, some predicates. So that's basically a refinement type. Uh, that could be uh, possible to implement. Like there are some ideas. Like I, I played around. It's very hard. Uh, there are some uh, C improvers who do just that. But integrating them in Scala C is just a pain. Um, another thing which uh, comes out comes up in several. Uh, Talks apparently is experimenting with more with standard libraries, uh, like Dotty wants to have a proper standard library that you know should type check with dot and and all that. And uh, type level uh, family of projects has um, different approach uh, to to like you know basic collections and uh, and type classes, and they, they call it cats. Uh, which is like a more modular, um, <laughs> a, a, a contemporary attempt at Scala Zeta. Um, maybe working a little bit on uh, alternative prep level. Uh, this is a picture of uh, uh, Ammonite, uh, which is uh, one of the alternative prep levels. Uh, and then uh, another thing that comes up uh, fairly uh, often is rethinking the role of implicit and just rethinking the same like how implicit work because uh, implicit resolution is is crazy. It's like uh, like ten clause rules. I think it's like the, the most the most complex thing in the Scala stack as far as far as far as I'm concerned. Um, I. Um, I gave a talk that's called "There's a prologue in your Scala." If you're interested, like if you if you see the whole implicit resolution thing as like a, a, a craft traversal prologue style, it kind of makes sense. But it's still, it's 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 a very it's a very like hard thing. It's a very uh, complex system, and a lot of people think that it could be made easier. Um, there are several um, there are several ideas in the type level. Compiler issues. Uh, one of them is implicit weight. So, like for example, if, uh, well, if you have several implicits, you can like assign weights to them to not have to like hide them in different layers, uh, different units of compilation. That's one of the ideas. So again, uh, you can try it out like that, uh, or to 11.8 the snapshot. Uh, don't try to 11.9 the snapshot. Um, it's there, but it doesn't work. Uh, if you want to uh, check out the Scala compiler or TLC compiler, this is how you uh, check that your uh, edition works before sending a pull request. Uh, there are other tools in, in the compiler that will help you uh, run your tests more precisely, like if you want only to test with singleton types and stuff. Um, 
and um, thanks. Okay, so uh, one question is more like an answer than a question. But, uh, so you had this link to your talk at the uh, research abroad in your scholar. Just for fun, I made a prototype, something called Pipehole, which is an actual kind of very small subset of code you can both scholar. You should try that. Is it on your GitHub? Yeah. Very nice, thank you very much. Um, yes. I I don't know if this was supposed to be an optimization like the you know the, the leading software basically for uh, uh stable pattern. Is there a few irrefutable patterns, yes. What is the design goal? Practice the python production is nice, but then the effect uh any modern JVM uh jitter will it need that check always turn on through as well. So the run platform and benefit for the network for Uh I think uh, well uh well obviously not having to to have a with filter on the thing is is a nice thing. For example, so like you can you can use something that doesn't have a with filter and then there is a uh, uh, we just think the, the API side required to you to use those things if you want to also use like buttons and the So basically, you need map and flatman, that's all. Um, I did like your um, <laughs> proposed uh, syntax for type lambdas. Uh, did you um, have an idea to create a SIP for adding this syntax or say future scala? Uh, so uh, the order of that is, I think, Eric Osheim, and I think he started several conversations in the like scala internals and all that. I'm not sure if he has a SIP. I should, should ask. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a fairly like straightforward tradition that I'm very used for that. Right? No? 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 Oh, okay. It's just, it's just a change in the part parser, basically. It just like, expands that thing to a type one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. If uh, type one that is just a simple macro expansion, uh, why for Philips warrant against them? Uh -huh. What are the, you know, the stones on the water? <laughs> uh, yes, maybe, maybe I can answer. <laughs> <laughs> the stones under the water of type lambdas is the hash that you have inside the type lambda. This hash that you have written there, it's a projection. It's not clear what it means at all. There is no theory which says what this hash means at all. And all the way how this hash is implemented in the compiler is very ad hoc. And in Doty, if you want to have hash, you need to have minus on your study. Yeah. Well, but nice. hash is included in Scala. In what hash means is only clear for if your prefix is a Java class. Then we are fine. Otherwise, there are counterexamples that show that hash, simple hash without anything additional is not sound. So like if you have like a type parameter and a type number or something? Yeah. Okay. So if you're interested to come yeah. look at the details, have a look at issue, uh, go to issue tracker. It has an issue called uh, type protection is not sound. Yeah. 
I think we're done. Go have a beer. <laughs>